This episode of Bustin' with the Boys, the Boys, is presented by Barstool Sports. What's going on, guys? Are you sunbathing? Because you look tan. No, um, I'm not. We can get into it. I got a, I got a regimen. I saw you pushing a car the other day. Yeah, dude. I'll do anything for clout now. I'll, I'll sell out for the brand. Wait, see, you know wait. Let's, let's wait before we start. I want to hear this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Are we recording? <laughs> no, we're started. We, we, just, we me? just. Oh, okay. We're yeah, started. We're started. We're already. We're already. That's what we do. Like, I, I don't know how you and PFT do it, but like, literally. We get on, we start recording, and then about three minutes in, we feel like we should tell our guests, like, hey, by the way, now you've been recorded for three minutes. Yeah. Okay. That's probably an offense. Love that. Do I need to record anything on my end? Well, no, I don't uh, think so. What do, you, what do you mean? Like, give, me, give an example. Like, usually I record my Zoom um, as a backup when we record PMT. I don't know if your uh, producer's doing that. We're all in on whatever we're on right now. We're on Zoom. Right. We're all in. <laughs> Zach, all if in. you want to give hey, me falls, it's second it's one. Over. Yeah. Zach or Alex, if you want to give me permission to record my own stream, I'll do it. So that way you can have a backup. I don't care if you don't want to do it, whatever. Hey, Zach, somebody chime in and let, and let them know. You guys know more about that than us. Yeah, just uh, give them that permission. You have permission. Yeah, you have permission. I don't yeah, have permission. Ahead. It says, please request re record permission from the meeting host. He doesn't mean no. I, I wasn't like saying like permission, like, like so. oh Hold hey on. Zach, will you let me like will you give me verbal permission? I'm talking I about the technical verbal. permission to record. I know I can do whatever the fuck I want, Zach. No, you <laughs> can't. No, you can't. You're on our podcast. If we if we were on your podcast, we would have to ask for verbal permission. But that here was we are great. On with the boys. That was great. Like like I'm I'm like some uh, super nervous like. A-list celebrities, like, I'm going to have my people recorded as well, just in case you guys try to take me out of context here. No question. <laughs> no, I need no actual question. permission, Zach. <laughs> no, anytime, anytime somebody brings up, like, hey, should we do, like, a certain intro to Bustin' with the Boys or, like, ad reads in the middle, I think we get a little too queasy, like, being structured. So, like, oh, we'll just figure it out afterwards. I love yeah, it. Just figure it out. I love it. So, I'm happy to be here with you guys. We're, uh, I am not tanning. You asked that question. Um, yeah, I did. I have a, I do have a regiment that I go, um, you know, you guys are different setups. Will, you're in Nashville right now? Yeah. Yeah, and, I'm in Nashville. And Taylor, right you're out in California. I'm in New yes. York City. It sucks. I'm, you know, my apartment is fine, but it's small and uh, living with a baby too. So we take a lot of walks and I have a, I have a weighted vest that I put on every day and I just no, walk around my neighborhood looking like I'm like a, a ex Navy SEAL. Um, even though obviously I'm too much of a pussy to be in the military, but yeah, it's pretty, that's pretty much all I do every day. It's my weighted vest and I walk around and try to get some steps in my Fitbit. I think, uh, I think being in the military is definitely something people would say, yeah, I'd love to do it, but never actually have the balls to actually do it. It's one of those right. things where we, we think we're cool enough. We think we'd be badass enough, but at the end of the day, we're just not. All right. There, there's also probably a spike in that right now because everyone's playing Call of Duty and they're like, holy shit, this is this is for me. Like I could this definitely be special ops. And then they forget that they've also just haven't left their apartment for three weeks straight and have just been eating pizza and like ice cream yeah. every day. So but that's kind of where we're at. I think they you know, also forget like that in the show, in their game, they get shot 15 to 16 times. Like you've died <laughs> seven times that day. Yeah. So like you're like, oh, I can, I can do this. Like, no, because you, the first time you died, it's over. That's the game. Like, yes. you lost. Yeah. And then the comeback is like, no, 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 they're spawn killing me right now. If no, they weren't fucking spawn killing Yeah, they me. figured There's out where no, I'm respawning. It's, it's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Yo, so, what's it yeah, like yeah, in New yeah. York? What's it's, it like um, out there? Like, what is boots on the ground? What is it fucking like? It's empty, man. It's weird. I mean, it's not empty, empty. Like, I actually went to the office last night because we recorded a bunch of interviews. Um, like, no traffic anywhere uh walking on the street you'll see a few people everyone's wearing masks now like the progression of masks has gone from like two weeks ago only like a couple people now 90 percent of the people you see are wearing masks and it's just not a lot of people and it's it's weird like if you if you came to new york right now it would probably look like uh a regular mid-sized city but being in new york and seeing how empty it is comparatively is eerie because usually new yeah. york is like you can't get away from people and now, you know, I'll go out for a walk with, with uh, my son and, and my dog at like eight in the morning and I won't see like more than like 10 people. Jesus. Dude, I can't, I mean, I, when I think of New York right now and how everything's in quarantine, I literally, literally think of I Am Legend. 
how every day like you're probably Dude, that's going exactly out the what i think too and streaming yeah. out every day at noon trying to tell people hey i'm here if you can hear me i'm here i think we'll do the thing like that on instagram <laughs> yeah that, it, it's it's a it's a wild setup i can't i can't imagine california is not far behind but it's not as congested as new york but right. it's everyone for the last week or two has started to wear masks like i was yes. at the gas station just me getting gas i i literally three homeless people can't say i'm not even joking some guy literally I was wearing gloves. I wasn't wearing a mask. I'm probably going to get coronavirus because of it. But he came up to me and started like yelling at me because I had Arizona license plates. How like, am I trying to get away from Corona? And then I, for some reason, decided to explain to this homeless man that the coronavirus is worse in California than it is in Arizona. He wasn't, he just started yelling at me. Oh, he should now go to Scottsdale and there's probably going to go stay at the Hyatt. It was a long, it was, it was a long journal thing. Basically I got in my car and I drove away as fast as I could, but I got gas. So mission accomplished. But you guys have, I would assume backyards, right? Yes. Yeah. A little one. Yes. So that's, that changes everything. Like I don't it's have a, a backyard. I don't, you know, it's just that space. You don't realize like my apartment is, is big or not big, but it's like, it's Weird big flex. for Go New York, ahead. right? Like a thousand square feet, whatever it may be. But once you live in a thousand square feet with no outdoor space, you're like, holy shit, this is not as big as I thought it was. And I could not people. live in New York. Yeah. I could not yeah. live in New York at all. So yeah, we're, we're going crazy, but uh, you know, it's weird too. I mean, you guys must be like, you know, you, you, you come onto bar stool, the season ends, like hit the ground running with content. And now this, it's like the worst timing for, uh, a new podcast, I mean, a relatively new podcast. That sucks. Yeah, the thing, the thing for me is like Will and I in the last week have literally just sat down. We have talked on the phone more than we probably would in a week, and we've just been brainstorming about ideas. We started a new thing called Picking with the Boys that we had an idea about, but because of this thing, it kind of was like, well, let's just get it started, start doing it now. Like we might as well start pushing content out as much as possible, and we have things backloaded with which some people agree with, some people disagree with, but. For us, it's kind of like, I mean, this is our chance to kind of like get our brainstorming ideas and put them into motion. Yeah. And so, and it's definitely different because I'm I'm in California, he's in, he's in Nashville, but I'll be in I'll be in Nashville in a couple of weeks. Nice. It's, nice. it's kind of yeah. like that military that military mantra: adapt or die. It's like we're, I'm sitting back and I'm watching all. I'm like, okay, we have one podcast we drop a week. We're steering. We're we're sitting nice. We were supposed to go to L.A. Uh, Barstool was going to send us to LA and do uh, busting with the boys out in LA. We had to cancel that. So you're kind of sitting back like, Hey, we're going to have to do podcasts because we can't have anybody come on the bus now. And we only have, I think after this, we only have like two actual being on the bus podcasts left. So we had to kind of think, okay, when the quarantine ends and everybody goes, goes back to normal life and people could actually come on the bus, we'll need some kind of buffer. So that way we don't have any drag or have to skip any weeks. So we're like saving those couple we have left. And now we're going to go, now we're adapting to Zoom, which you're our first guest, by the way. And uh, there we go. You, you, you kind of sit back and think like, okay, let's watch and see how Barstool does all their stuff now. Because everybody's going to have to adapt on the internet somehow. And they kind of, you know, you guys kind of create and run the internet. So I've just been sitting back and anything that comes up, Taylor and I get on the phone. I'm like, hey, what, what in the hell can we do other than just like one podcast that we're going to just – annoy everybody out annoy everybody about all week long around one episode that people aren't watching or listening to podcasts near as much now it's kind of you just kind of got to adapt and go it is weird but it's been kind of fun too it it's definitely weird the the weirdest part for me is like the the adapting thing isn't even happening because we're just going back in time like i've had this conversation with like kfc and dave and and k marco and feidelberg and like all the guys been around forever it's like we're doing exactly what we did five years ago and by that i mean waking up in your apartment sitting down sitting at your computer for like 12 hours and just m like making content on your own like not talking to anyone like g-chatting with a few people but that's what we did for years so we're back to square one i feel like we're just going back in time to the original bar stool and it's kind of fun like i hope it doesn't last very long because i want sports to come back but there's yeah. been parts of it that's been like this is kind of fun to go back in time there's a lot of people right now saying that season's not happening the NFL season will not happen. Who? Kirk Herbstreet. Kirk Give Herbstreet me the name. Fuck out. Kirk Herbstreet. Okay. Whoa. All right. Let's yeah, yeah, that's talk. heavy. We're not saying that. Well, hold okay, on, that's fine. I said it. I've I've gone I've gone up and down. On <laughs> no, Kirk no, Herbstreet that the season's not happening. No, listen. No, Kirk, fuck Kirk. I I actually like Kirk Herbstreet as an announcer, but fuck him for saying that because that was such a ridiculous thing to say when he said it, and he was doing it for headlines, like and he got ago. everyone in a panic. So Kirk Herbstreet, I got no beef with you other than that particular comment which was fucked up 
I'll tell you what, I DM'd him. That's how upset I was. I DM'd him and I said, hey, where'd you get this information? Who are you talking to? Is there somebody, you, do you know scientists? Are there people you know? And he literally just sent me his phone number and said, if you want to talk, call me. I haven't, I haven't had the balls to call Let's him call yet. call him right now. That's what he said? Want, call him right now. You want me to? Yeah, <laughs> yeah call, call him right, right now. now. Like, Kirk, what do you, you got to tell him that we're recording. I think that's, yeah, uh, say, what's the deal we got? Who, we'll I got in. To it with I can't remember what I I got into it with him a couple couple months ago, and then he followed me. I can't remember. I I think I yelled at him because he was, I thought he was being mean to Wisconsin during a game or something like true meatball shit. Can you guys hear it ringing? Yeah. What's up, bro? Yeah, hey, Kirk. What's up? It's Taylor Lewan. Tell him before he talks any farther. I uh, before you talk any farther, you I'm on a Zoom podcast right now. We can delete it if you want. I'm with Big Cat from Barstool and Will Compton. Awesome. So we're we're literally just talking. Big Cat had some strong words for you about the comments you made <laughs> about. Oh, he said he had strong words for himself too. He we were talking about how you said you you'd be surprised if the college college football and NFL happened. Do you still believe yeah. that? Well, again, I gotta remember when I said that. I mean, that was March twenty fifth. I had no idea we, Put it close we, to a microphone, Taylor. Dr. Fauci and all their updates and things that we would get every day. And when I did that interview, I was doing it with this Boston radio guy. And I'm friend, I've been friends with him for like 30 years. And I was almost just thinking out loud. The way, the way it was reported, it was like I declared there will not be any football on top of a mountain, which was the last thing I would ever do. Or even, I was just talking, you know, like me talking to you right now, just, just thinking out loud of how serious this is. Uh, this virus is and how we got to really look at the possibility of maybe not having football in the fall. I said, I'd be surprised if they can provide it without a quarantine. And I, you know, if you look at it now, I think starting on time after talking to a lot of, a lot of decision makers, I think starting on time is uh, still something we all hold on to hope for. We all hope that that's a possibility. But I think what I've learned is they're, they're building four or five different contingency plans on depending on when they free the country up, you know, when everybody's safe, we'll start on time. That's, that's option A. Do we need to push it back a month? You know, that's, that'd be you know, starting in October or November. They've talked about starting in December or January. And the latest is even talking about starting, we're talking college and NFL, possibility of starting it in, in late February and March which would put us you know, playing college football basically like a spring sport, playing March and April and May and playing bowl games in June, wow. which is just bizarre. But that's what, that's what the decision makers are realistic. They're trying anything and everything they can do to salvage, if it comes to that, try to salvage a football season. Um, you know, man, I'm the I'm, – I'm the last guy that wants football season canceled, man. I, yeah, I think. Well, I think you're the second to last guy. Big Cat is. He's, yeah, he's yeah, having yeah, a very, he's he's having a very hard time. Can you hear can me? You, can you hear me, I, Kirk? I have, I have my headphones in. I'll oh, you have, headphones. You have to ask. All right. Well, so I just tell Cat, tell it. tell Kirk that after after hearing what he just said, I will retract. I did just say fuck Kirk Curb Street for that uh -huh. statement. I will retract it now. Okay, so Big Cat, Big Cat did say on this podcast that we're, we're still recording that he said, fuck Kirk Curb Street because of the comments you made, not because of the person you are. And he is now retracting that statement. Are you still with me? My service is terrible. No, so I'm, I'm here. Okay, and so no, I, I hey, want you to know, he's Kirk, not very, he's not tell him I second that. Yes. You, you said what? Tell him I second that. Okay. He All seconds, right, retract you said, it. You, you, retract it's retracted. It. Second his comment. I not so Kirk, but his initial comment, yeah. I felt the same way. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I'll be honest with you. I when well, you know, I, I DM'd you on Twitter. That's how we got this conversation, yeah. and because yeah. I was worried because I love football just as much as the next guy. Yeah, and I and to me, is it like we go August, and then once January hits, it's like okay, guess no football. But you're saying that there's a there's a chance there's here a that really we go strong possibility that if if it comes to that, and we're talking like. Last ditch effort. They're trying everything they can to salvage a season. If it comes to it, basically having basically kind of like what we just had with the XFL, like a spring football, but it'd be college football in in season, you know months like March and April and May and June. Jesus. I mean, think about this. Think about going back to your days in Ann Arbor. Then you've got what four or five weeks to recover, and now you got to start 
because they're they're going to hope to get back to business in 21. Now you got to get ready to get going for combines for the next season. You know, if you're an underclassman. So does that that. does that the NFL play that way? And I know, Big, I know you had a question. We'll do one more, and then we'll let we'll let you go because this is this is this is becoming a weird four way (laughs) kind of weird triangle (laughs) podcast now that. It's making us all a little uncomfortable. I, I picture I picture the beginning of this podcast is just you know the Barack Obama the picture where it said hope. It's going to be yeah. your your face on top of that just with the image of football behind you. But here's here's how I see. So you're saying these kids are going to go do college football in March, April, May. No, no I'm saying if it comes. To if that, it comes to that, no, 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 no. I'm not. I, I'm going to put words in your mouth. Hopefully they're, hopefully they're still going to be on time. But if yeah. it, they're willing to go as far as pushing this thing back. To the spring, just to try to salvage having the football season. I mean, that's that would be like last ditch effort type of stuff. And hopefully, it'll it'll be able to start on time. And if maybe it's pushed back a month, I, I'm not declaring again anything. I'm just telling you what I'm being told that they're willing to try to do anything and everything to try to make the, the 20 football season happen. And if it comes to pushing it back to the spring, then then they're going to look into that and see if they can make that a possibility. But like I said, hopefully, hopefully we'll have you guys a little bit of in July. We start seeing the ball in in, uh, in August, September. That's that's the hope. We're all still holding out hope for that. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I think I think it'll happen. Big Ed, get the question. Last question. Last question. The last question. Kirk, Kirk why he doesn't like the Badgers and why he uh, carried the water for the refs during the Rose Bowl when they did a horrible job and screwed over Wisconsin. Okay, so this is not this. Okay, this is not biased at all, but. <laughs> He, Kirk wants to know. Uh, sorry, Big Cat wants to know why you hate the Badgers, right? Yes. And why and why you carry the waters for the ref refs during the Rose Bowl? Right. Two things. It's gonna kill him to know this. Barry Alvarez, I call him Al Capone, is probably my closest friend in the coaching <laughs> business. The last team that I hate are the Wisconsin Badgers. I get accused of being a Wisconsin Badger homer. I love the Badgers. I love everything that they represent. Constant overachievers. How do you not like Wisconsin or Iowa teams like that? Yeah. Hey, or Nebraska. Wisconsin. Or Nebraska. Tell them Nebraska. He's too. guilty of hearing what he wants to hear, like most fans. But I, if you listen with objective ears, you would know that I love the Badgers. Just like Michigan. They stand for. Yep. Fair. Just Fair. like Michigan. I, I say. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I respect Michigan. You know that. I don't know, Kirk, because you you went to Ohio State. It's, it's tough. <laughs> And then I, I remember, I remember walking in. I remember walking into Vrabel's office, and you two were looked like you were sipping tea to, with each other, just laughing when he got the head coaching job. And you guys were on your O H I O high horses, staring at me, staring down at me, because it's been, it's been a, it's been not a good rival. I won't even say it's been a rivalry lately. Michigan's down, and I know, I know the president would say the same thing. It'll come back, but tell him the, I did not. I did not do any. I don't even remember what he's talking about with the refs. But no, man, he, he's way off base. Yeah, like, he's well, I he's mean, in New York, so you anti, don't know what he's going. Anti Badger. I'm, I'm he's going through a lot right now. I'm going to call Barry as soon as we hang up and tell him that he said that. Uh, uh, hey, well, I, hey, let me tell you, I appreciate you picking up the phone, and uh, I had a request coming up in the future. Maybe do a Zoom podcast with the boys, bust with the boys. Maybe do a collab with a uh, part of my take as well. All right, man. All right, we will. Thank you. Did you, okay, before you go, before you say anything, do you say that he said, I'm a big fan of Big Cat and keep up the good work? And I said, thank you. I took that credit. Did you see that? But he did say, uh, and I actually, so I'm looking it up, uh, the tweet, because I was like, why was I mad at him? And I'm looking it up, and I want to say to my credit, this is us just being way too nice to each other, but. I said that I was displacing my anger at him during the Rose Bowl, and I still mm. think they're the best booth because they are. They're the best booth in, in college football. I don't think that's up for discussion. So it's good that Kirk Herbstreet, uh, I was able to retract it. He seems like he doesn't – he thinks they're, they're doing everything they can to get a football season. And we just made some uh, podcast memories right there. We did. It was beautiful. Speaking hey, of memories, we should, we, we should open Taylor's, it all. Taylor's Kirk, got some beef. Hang on. Taylor's got some beef with Kirk. I, well, I was just going to bring to. it up. I used to. Kirk, Kirk tweeted after we played the Raiders one game that I was a fake tough guy. Basically, basically just called me a piece of shit. Basically said I was a fake tough guy, piece of shit. And um, we worked it out. And I feel like this is a perfect opportunity for May 7th, 2014. You tweeted that I was going to be a bust. So now we have a huge opportunity. Okay. Well, hey, Big Cat said that? 
Right. Yeah, he did but, tweet that. But, oh, but, but to, shit. No, to be fair, to be fair to Big Cat, I think he was going on a rampage. I think he called everybody a bust in that draft. Except the Bears oh. pick. Yes, Except which was Kevin White. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think, I mean, my draft is pretty, it was pretty awful. I think it was Jadavian Clowney, Zach Martin, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., Xavier Rhodes was in that thing. Uh Ryan Shazier, it was a it was a pretty shitty draft to say the oh, least. Oh, we get your point. Wait, yeah. so wait, so um, hold on, I want to go back to wait. Well, who was wait? Was that Kevin White though? That might not have been. Uh, it might have been Fuller, Kyle Fuller. Kyle Fuller, yeah, yeah. Who is not a bust? The next year was Kevin White. Um, do you think? I feel like people call you a, a fake tough guy. Like I've heard that a few times. What the hell's yeah. that from? Like, where's the I genesis from? I, I think people are just really starting to figure me out. You know. I, at the end of the day, I, I talk a lot of game, and then I don't really I back it up too much. You know, I do. I get in it with cornerbacks. I don't really get in with D linemen. I, I, I kind of like I take the easy way out. Yeah, I take the easy way. Out. I I think I've just really enjoyed getting barstool to make me go viral. And so I've I think from the beginning when it was um, who's who's your boy uh, Josh Norman mm-hmm. shot the arrow at him. He's not going to beat me up in a fight. That's a that's a win win right there. All right. Yeah. Hit him, hit him with the arrow and move on. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, now a personal friend of the bus and us, and um, got in his face. He felt like a ton of bricks. You know? So that's I think smart. I'm just getting figured out. Yes. Uh, it is, it's playing smarter, not harder. Right. So when people but, say uh, you're a fake tough guy, like you're like, yeah, so? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, I still block you, right? Yeah. Like, what if I say, well, I block you, so whatever. <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. I, I think, like, well, I, mean, I think he I gets it because I, he start. He start Hang on, hang on. That's somebody who played against you. He's somebody, who, he's somebody who likes to chirp when they're already winning and ahead, which oh, you got to respect. Yeah, you got to oh, respect absolutely. that. Like, it's Thank tough. You. Like, when you're losing and somebody's chirping you, there's not a whole lot you can do. So you reactively just think, oh, what's the easiest thing to call him? And it's fake tough okay. guy or front okay. Are you, okay, I did talk shit to J.J. Watt when we were down about 21 points in Houston. I was like, fuck you, J.J., you try hard white guy, piece of shit. Like started going off on him. And he looked at me, and he goes, scoreboard, pussy, and, like, kept jogging off, like, between plays. And, I, like, I, for some reason, never been more mad in football in my entire life. That was the maddest I've ever gotten. J.J. Watt is a Hall of Famer. He's a first out Hall of Famer. He's an incredible football player. Can't stand him. Well, Can't stand J.J. Watt. So that taught you the lesson to never talk shit when you're down. Well, it's, just, it's like – Let's play chess, not checkers. Why would I talk shit to you when I'm down? Like, we're, we're, like it's the fourth quarter. I'm down by 21 points. The game's lost. It's over. What am I going to do? What am I going to salvage my pride? I can, I can salvage that by just shutting my mouth and moving on to the next game. Play so, hard finished. So do you I still – I do talk shit. I talk shit in the beginning of games. When it wins at zeros, my mouth is running. Will knows that. All right? When I, and if it's close, I'm talking. As soon as things get out of hand – Time to, time to zip it up, buckle it up, and kind of get ready to move on to week, week two or week three, whatever we're on next. That's just the reality. That's what you got to do. Yeah. You're like, no way. No way. Fuck that. I'm a, I'm a real G. I, I do every – no. Just you leave it alone. Like, if you're losing and you're getting your ass kicked, let the other guy talk shit to you. They've won the battle, even if you've been beating him all game. So, do you still hate J.J. Watt? Yeah, I'm not a fan. So, we, my wife and her, uh, my wife put on a Houston strong event. She raised eighty thousand dollars in two days for the the hurricane in Houston, um, and they were talking about where we should donate it, and they want to do Red Cross, but Red Cross like chops off ten percent off the top for them to keep their stuff going, and the only foundation that doesn't take anything off the top was the boy JJ Watt. Mm-hmm. Never, never got a thank you card. Never got a phone call. We have the same agent. Well. 80,000. I mean, that's he would he raised like 20 million. million hey, dude, million you're like a place. you're a fucking you're like a, a drop of piss in the toilet. It would have been th- it would have been 39.2 if I didn't donate though. 30, I'm sorry, 30.92. I, I used to we used to go after JJ, but we went out and interviewed him in Wisconsin and I, I'm like friendly with him now. And I just I, I think he was trying too hard at the beginning of his career and he's mm-hmm. kind of realized like he doesn't have to be a superhero. And he's a genuinely nice guy. Like, if I meet someone and I talk to them and it's like, this guy's just a nice person, I'm not going to keep hating them. I'm not going to keep busting their balls the same way yeah. because that's just what J.J. – like, he's a nice guy. He has good intentions. He's, I think he's a loyal guy. I think he's, like, probably a very good friend to his friends. So, 
yeah, he could be corny sometimes, but he's admitted that he's corny. And if you could admit it, yeah. like you, you kind of, you kind of solve the riddle. Like if you, if we had interviewed JJ and he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not corny. Like, that's just who I am. We'd be like, fuck this. But he admitted like, yeah, I tried a little right. too hard to start like my career. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think you, I think you can accept it's that. Cause the, the things are the things that I, I like, I would hear allegedly is that he always knows when the camera's around and stuff of that nature. He's admitted that. knowing that I have heard that. He's, he's admitted like, that. If he's, yeah. he's actually admitted that. Oh, he's yeah. admitted that. Yes. He's admitted that like he right, did that go. too much. So, and, and, and it, it's, anytime someone does that, I think it, uh, it's like, Hey, you know what? He learned from like, we've all made mistakes. We're all fucking idiots. When we were younger, we all like, don't know how to deal with success. Don't know how to deal with this, that, or the other. Like I think about, 23 year old me and i cringe you know what i mean like i'm sure you guys have the same moment yeah, yeah, so sure. it's just he just happened to be in front of millions and millions and millions of people all the time and everything was being videotaped so his cringeworthy moments are something that we can basically make fun of non-stop yeah Do i you, think okay. what really pissed me off was the fact that he's and taylor can attest this too there is no one on their own running however many half gassers and like a whole extra practice after a tra after a hard training camp day Mm -hmm. I saw that on mm -hmm. Hard Knocks, and I was like, this dude, this is false. Because we, on the Redskins, we practice against them. So we were around, we saw this stuff, and then you see it on TV, and you're like, this is, this is bullshit. Like, that's how, you, that's how we identified that, like, he knows when the camera's on him. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Interesting. And play, playing, with, playing with guys that have played with him have, has expressed the same thing. However, if you're willing to admit that you're, you've pushed a little too far, which – I can attest that I have too. And we're all about retracting statements right now. I might need to talk to him. I might need to have a conversation with JJ. I might need to have a sit down Zoom conversation. But I, I think that I've, I've might have, I might have gone a little too hard on JJ. And um, yeah, I retract wow. my statement. Taylor, we, okay, should, we should have him on, Taylor, and we should just both apologize to him. I can help you when, bridge the gap. Yeah, I'll bridge, you, I'll bridge the gap. If you. we're about retracting, I, once I heard that, I'm like, okay, if he's admitted, like, I can get on board with that. Because if I know you, if, he, if, if he confronted me to my face, listen, I would probably fold. Well, and no. that, uh, if no, he's like, hey, hey, you talking all this shit? Oh, whoa, whoa, take it easy, big guy. I probably didn't say all that. But now, that's, like, let's, go sit over, even, let's go sit over here and have a question and have a little chat. He wouldn't do that because he's a nice guy. And he also, like, I think there's something to be said. Um, you guys don't fall in this camp. I don't fall in this camp. But I think there are certain people, and everyone has that friend who's like, you know that friend who doesn't really bust balls? He's just a nice guy. Like, you have yeah. friends that are just not capable of, like, giving each other shit. Like, that one guy in your friend group who's just a nice guy and everyone likes him. And it's like, but you know that, like, he's not going to be able to give it back so you don't give it to him as hard. Like, that's kind of what I always figured when I met JJ. I was like, oh, I have a friend just like you. Like, this makes sense, you know? You're, you're a good name? dude. You can be part of the crew. <laughs> and I'm not going to say his name because then he'll be mad <laughs> that I busted his balls here. But, like, there's that one guy. You know, most times, most of your friends, like, almost all my friendships are just pretty much shitting on each other all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, but then you got one guy who's like, yeah, you just kind of, you root for him. And you're like, hey, he's a nice guy. Let's, let's root for his success. Yeah, I, I I would say most of my friendships are like that. Will is my person for that. Like, I don't like to give him too hard of a time because he does fold. Yeah. He's like his dog. Whoa, he is kind whoa, of a pussy whoa, like Get that. the fuck out he of here, is. dude. Will, no, we're, yeah, we're hey. not bringing this shit up. If there's anybody who can take jokes, it's the boy. If there's anybody who can't okay. take jokes, it's mm -hmm. Taylor Lewan. Okay. okay. Oh, man. Here's where, here's where we are, Will. We're in a classic Mexican standoff here. This is the situation, you know, when you're with your friends and you say, hey, stop being sensitive. Mm -hmm. And you think to yourself, like, no, I'm not being sensitive. But you realize, like, however hard you react to being sensitive, now you are actually proving them right by being sensitive. Yeah. So the only way, the only way to beat that will with my wall, okay, okay. All right, will you win? You triggered. That's fine. You can, I'm not hey, triggered. You can have that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hey, hey, will. <laughs> hey, will, you can have your moment. Yeah, don't fucking take, don't take. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, hey, hey, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. All right. Let, let me ask you guys this because obviously people want to hear about this. Where are we at with our beef? Because you guys, you know, now we're coworkers. That's true. Uh, That's true. You started the beef. And then, yeah, I, I, I you know, it was, it was a well played beef. Hang I on. never was actually mad. It Tell was pretty it funny. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just, I get it. Like, you're, you've, you've grown, like, you guys, Barstool, like, they understand the game. And for you to say we started the beef is false, 1,000% false. Here's why. Hang on. Hang okay. On. Okay. We, when Vrabes came on his favorite podcast, 
which has been addressed already. Part of my take. They, with he the actually said, you should, the boys. We listened, we listened to the same clip, take. and it backfired on you. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he came on and said he would snip his piece, piece off for a Super Bowl, you guys addressed it in your next podcast, and you said, not I quote, but in, in some form or fashion, you were like, I can't believe he came on. He's like our, one of our football guys. I can't believe he didn't come on our podcast and say that. He went on his Offensive Lineman's podcast. I don't even know what it's called. What? And what's, said he where's, kinda, stop me where I've, I've hang said on, something hang on. wrong. And, P, and PFT <laughs> goes, yeah, why didn't he go on his defensive player's podcast or something? And I I played for the man, too, on defense. <laughs> And you're like, oh, I don't know. You guys kind of use it all. And then if you take Vrabel's clip or Jalen Ramsey's clip when he talked about, like, him talking shit to uh, receivers or whatever, you guys will take your image and quote him, and then it'll be, like, a little down in the corner via busting with the boys. It's very small print down the corner. Tiny. You guys okay. still won't address us as okay. with the boys. Let's see what they say. Okay. Till we're on, we'll just stop stuff. That's tough. You're you're stuck in a Dan Orlovsky. He's just Bernard he's Pollard. so fucking annoying about it. All right, here you go. The de- the Mike Rabel uh, penis cutting story was on his podcast. Uh, was it? What's it called? Busting with a boy. Don't Bustin disrespect us. Bleep that out, Hank. Uh, so yeah, there you go. There's the credit, and we can move on. Okay. okay. Talking All right. About, talking about eight eight point font times New Roman. Not okay. even a little class to it. Nothing. All, yeah. All <laughs> fair. Go. All right. Let me give you from my perspective. One, go I ahead. remember vividly. I was reading the ESPN article. So oh. I, you got to fire your social team because I didn't see it from you guys. I read it off an of ESPN article. Okay? We were in the incubator okay. stage. Two, Two was our first your, one. Yeah, your social team. You guys, whoever was running your social account. I think their only job was to wake up and comment on part of my take tweets and Instagrams and my tweets and Instagrams. And that's all they did for like a month. It was, I couldn't go anywhere without busting with the boys popping up. That's good. Hey, hey that's hey, good. Guess, guess what? Guess what? Big cat. You're going to RIP Matt Neely, but damn it. He did it for the boys. He okay, did, go, man. He did RIP Matt Neely. Sorry. I didn't know. I, that's, uh, I, it's okay. Right. It's, it's okay. probably. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No. You didn't know. Okay. No, 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 he didn't but know. you, but you, you what, also Josh, tweeted. For that. Remember. Yeah. Oh yeah. He would. He would, Yeah. He'd be. Matt Neely. Be all we're about thinking this. about you right now. Great job, dude. You fucking crushed it because hey, I. But you woke you, up and I'd turn my. I would look over my shoulder and it would be that fucking stupid ass logo in that horrible <laughs> maroon. Yeah. It's so gross. Yeah. Yes. Right in my fucking comments, dude. Let's but go, you, tweet, you tweeted too, like. Uh, I think like Terry Lamont won't stop being annoying to me or something. So Taylor here, here, here you like go. Hundred times he said, "Here you go. Here's your shout out. Bust with the boys." So just the level of disrespect that kind of built up over time, it made for a okay. good piece in the old memory bank. Fair, now here we are. Playing chess. Here, here's what. Just playing here, chess. Hold on. Fast forward. Big cat. Fast forward real yeah, quick. Yeah. We can go back to this, but we're going to quit and Tarantino those things. That's what we do in the bus. Fast forward. We're walking through Barstool headquarters. You come in in this. Oh. This jumpsuit, this '70s Sick. jumpsuit, yeah, with your with your glasses on like this, and go. I knew what you guys were doing the whole time. I knew what you guys yeah. were up to the whole time. You, well, I mean, you were commenting on everything, so I kind of figured it. Well, you took our and stuff. Look, look you were using us. our stuff as material. <laughs> yeah, I was quoting an ESPN article. So then, my favorite quote, and maybe your producer can put this in, but my favorite quote was when Taylor said, "You guys were like shitting on me," and you were like. Anyone thinks that they can put a microphone in front of their face and be funny and and build an oh, audience? Man, big cat, like a Mortal dude. Kombat letter. Man, big cat, dude. He's got like the problem is, man. People get a little jangle in their pocket. They think they're the man all of a sudden. They got a mic in front of their face. You're the man all of a sudden. And I was like, Is Taylor realize he's talking about his fucking self right now? He started a <laughs> podcast three weeks ago. <laughs> Hey, what's funny about that podcast is is Taylor like started that podcast and he was going back in on the whole bar stool because we had posted more content about we're like with the Quentin feud. Nelson. We're and with ta- Quentin Nelson. Yeah, yeah, Taylor was going in and I remember like, hey, are we sure we want to get into this little dilemma with Barstool? And then at the end, he's like, hey, I just want you to know, I, I apologize. We're going to back. I never thought it was, was I never took took it to be uh, serious. And that was what the fun was. Like if you guys were, if you guys had played it, serious and been like super pissed then it would have it wouldn't have worked you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it if i it like it just it worked out perfectly so now you're part of the pirate ship and uh the whole thing is funny to look back at but i just remember and yeah quentin was pissed at us quentin i dude. watched back i played it back for him when he came into the office like a month ago i was like dude look watch this clip he's like you know what that fucking pisses me off fuck those guys 
and obviously Quentin Nelson, I'm like, I'm not trying to start shit with him. I was hey, like, you seen I was like, hey, can I show you this clip? But like, just settle down there, big boy. Um, <laughs> yeah. He laughed about it too, so it's all good. Dude, Quinn, Quinn is like the nicest human. Quinn is, Quinn is what we were talking about, JJ Watt, like nicest human being in the world. He's not going to dish it like that, but he's like one of the dudes like won't hurt a fly unless for some reason he puts a helmet on. Then all of a sudden it's absolutely terrifying. Quinn, the only <laughs> thing I have to ask about Quinn is I'm sure you guys have gone out with him. Quinn strikes me as the friend, and this isn't a bad thing because, again, this is a friend that we all have that – uh, when I had a few beers, maybe wrestles a little with the guys and then, like, ends up, like, breaking someone's leg because he's ten times bigger than everyone. I can see it happening. I can absolutely see it happening. But it's all, like, good fun. Yeah. I was with Quentin in Cabo, and um, he spent a whole entire dinner pretending that drinks were talking shit to him <laughs> and then just <laughs> chugging them. In front. He's like, what'd you say about me? You said I look a little fat today? And you just chug a margarita. And he, did Taylor, seven, Taylor. he did like seven or eight times the entire, the entire time we were there to the point where like I left Cabo thinking that food was talking shit to me and actually would start eating the food because like, in the name of Quentin Nelson. That's in the amazing. name of Quentin Nelson, dude. That's is that amazing. why you, that's, that's why we're always when we're out eating, you're like, and you see me like one that like he's something nice. You're like, hey, Will's that thing talking shit to you? That's really <laughs> Yes, that. dude. We'll be out <laughs> there, a little cookie. Yo, hey, that cookie talking shit to you. Hey, like, yep. hey, I see that cookie talking a little shit over there. I'll tell you what. Speaking of not eating cookies, they can't like, first off, let's just put it all behind us. I think we mm-hmm. can all agree we're friends now at this well, point. Well, yeah, you guys, you guys, your success. Sure. Yep, and we're going to start it off. Well, hang on, hang on. No, 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 Taylor. I want to hear what he was about to say. I <laughs> okay. hear no, we're all good because I want you guys to be successful. Your success puts money into my pocket. So I okay, want okay, you guys okay, okay. to win. I, you, I you thought he was going to say. You didn't yeah, see yeah, that didn't happening see right there? <laughs> no. That's no. hilarious. No, like, I'm, I'm just, team busting with the boys. As, as soon as Big Cat went, well, I'm excited. That high pitch frequency. Yeah, 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 like yeah. he lives in New York. He hasn't gotten that excited in two weeks. Dude. He's in quarantine. He literally is so excited for us to make money, which by the way, you're welcome. I think we're the number one podcast in your guys' little thing. So the yeah, pirate ship like, is literally <laughs> afloat. Not even you guys, close. The, the pirate ship was literally like, we don't know what to do. We're in we're in quarantine. And they just literally pulled a lever that said busting with the boys and we <laughs> Here's and we what just I'm gonna do. And we're now we're now drifting off the sea, dude, and getting your sails right. You're welcome. Here's what I'm gonna do. You know those yeah, little um no the little the little uh trucks that like little kids drive around, like three year olds. I'm gonna get my my son's not he's only ten months now, but when he gets to be like two, I'm gonna buy one. I'm gonna put busting with the boys all over it. I'm gonna buy it with the money that you're putting in my pocket. Perfect. Ooh, I love there it. There it is. There I it love is. it. I love it. My daughter is um she's two and a half now. And um, her daddy made his, his own money. So we're just going to buy her whatever she wants, whatever she wants. So they'll be okay. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll pay for your stuff too. It's amazing. Taylor, what are, you, what are, you, what are, what are we trying to do here? What are, I don't know. He we... started it again. He did it again. I know. Yeah. He, I'm, literally, <laughs> he was, I'm, I thought... I'm literally I'm literally sweating right now. Oh, my God. He got me all hot and bothered. <laughs> I thought he was going to say He's your success came from recycling an idea we used to have because no. internally that bothers me when I hear that. I try not to react because, hey, I can take a good joke. Yeah, oh, something uh, I do, in, I do that. in my gut will mean? burn when somebody says, oh, where'd you get the bus idea from? And I literally think in my head, it literally came from Taylor's brain when he saw a picture of a bus and just got excited. Well, yeah, when he saw when he saw Barstool Van talk, and he was like, dude, this would be good. Um, no, I, I never thought you guys <laughs> ripped us off of that. That is the most, like, interviewing people. We ripped Jerry Seinfeld off. Like, he, Jerry Seinfeld lift, rip, ripped off uh, the t- uh, taxi cab confessions, dude. Like, or whatever the fuck. Like, there's this has been done a million times. Guys so I never, yeah. I never thought you guys did that. It's such a that was, that was a PFT comment. That. that was a PFT uh, move. We'll have him on next. One thing um, that I do have a beef with Barstool about, which we're fine now, fake guy. <laughs> but I, I, I'm sorry, I got a little hot there for a second. Mm-hmm. The, the, it's, it's, I haven't had a lot of human contact in the last two weeks, so it's nice to finally get revved up. Um, when I was in college at Michigan, a football player. Barstool would come and have these banger parties. And I I never even thought about this. And then last night, my wife and I started watching the the Barstool, the documentary you guys have, which is unbelievable, by the way. I'm like on episode four or five. And we started talking about how they're making these parties. I never got into those parties ever. I actually was turned away several times. Dude. And it it was a full circle thing for me. And so I'm very happy to be a part of the pirate ship. Listen, listen. Those parties, like, 
I would have given you my invite because I've never felt more awkward in my life when we would do those. Dave and I would go and, and it was, there were sometimes we'd have parties that were not, we didn't have to go to, but I know for a fact we went to at least one in Ann Arbor where Dave and I were dressed in togas. I was probably 29 or 30. Dave was like 38 or 39. I've never felt more out of place in a party like in my life i was mortified standing there in a fucking toga and of course all the kids didn't wear togas they're like fuck this we're not wearing togas so we showed up like in the we're the only two people in togas and we're like what the fuck is going on here and i think we stayed for like a half hour we're like we got to get out of here so i i would have given you my invite they they were uh it was fun when we did them because it was like that was when we're really building it up and like had to be boots on the ground but uh, it's funny that that is full circle. <clears throat> it's wild. What, what year do you think that was that you guys were in Ann Arbor? If you had to guesstimate. 13, 14. Well, I was there in 13. Yeah. Yeah, 13 or 14. 14. Yeah, probably both. I mean, we went to a couple of times. We, we went there for uh, different videos and different shit. Yeah, no, I, I never expected to like get a, a, a treatment to get in there. I don't know why I thought I would be able to get in. But I remember going to these Barstool things and like being like, this is this would be so sick to be a part of this and then here we are it's wild and now and now it's kind of another full circle because i'm 28 married with a kid i'm too old to go to those parties now yes so things yes. so I, I i was born too late i guess i don't know yes yes Tough Will, life. Wh what's um what's are you still on a team right now <laughs> no that wasn't supposed to be me no, i'm actually asking question <laughs> trailer Taylor, that's no, a serious question. I wasn't question. trying to be Don't me. Don't fucking laugh. No, I know you're not. I was I actually not. asking. I, I didn't know, know if not. you had – if because I know no. you were on a team last year. Yeah, uh, free agency started like mid-March, so I'm, I'm back to being a free agent again. Is it – do you think coronavirus is fucking with like – because I've always – it is weird to see from like the media side. I feel like the the dudes at the top end are getting paid still, but like – everyone else is kind of screwed because if a team's going to take a risk on someone or like, you know, sign someone, they want to do the physical, they want to do the meeting and all that shit. You can't do any of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like a couple of things I've heard is that it can, the, like the guys who make not the guys that aren't at the top, everybody else. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day, an agent the other day, and they were kind of telling me that um, like owners, the way everything is like the landscape of spending money and spending cash. And you might take a couple million in cash and give the, give to some vet. Uh, if it's, if it's affecting your bottom line, because a lot of the owners aren't as liquid as like a Jerry Jones outside of owning a football team. Like a lot of their liquidity is really counting on this football season happening and stuff like that. So there's kind of a, that's a theory. That's not like end all be all, but that was like a thought of like some, uh, second tier, third tier free agent guys getting signed. Like there's kind of a period that where everybody's kind of in a standstill. That makes sense. I just fucking hope they have football. I mean, I'm going to, it's going to, it's crazy. I mean, it doesn't seem like we're going to have any kind of off season program. No, I mean, I got to no. be on a team to have one. Zero, but... zero. Yeah. But, uh, but like, think about like the draft picks and stuff. Like how weird is that going to be for them? They're going to just, they won't show up till maybe June, July at the earliest. Right. At the right. earliest. They might not show up till – I mean, when we were talking to Kirk Herbstreit, he's talking about, like, college football season happening in February and March. Who is to say that doesn't happen to the NFL too? Right. You know? Right. And how long does that go? How long is our, our break after that? Do we, do we go kind of like a baseball where it's like three months and then we go to, like, right back into it? It's, like it's, a cra training. it's crazy. Because crazy. If, you if you do college like that in the spring, you're going to have the draft and training for – like, training for all this stuff happening. Thing. The whole thing. Like you're gonna fucks have to up. kind of postpone. Yeah. The whole thing fucks it up. Fucks up you got, it's, it's almost like you gotta you gotta stay in your lane with the August through January, because if you go into uncharted territories of January to March, April, what all that, you've now fucked up 2021, and now it's like, what, what do you do then? Are you Taylor? Do you know the answer to this? Like, if they cancel the season, do you get paid or no? I would assume that's no. The biggest, that's the biggest question. So there was an article. I think so. My, I think we do. Uh, um. There was an article that came out that was like the NBA and MLB and hockey can do something where they can like say like a natural disaster and like there's some sort of way they can twist it to not pay the players. And like the NFL – and I don't, this might not be right at all. I might be totally wrong. The NFL somehow in the CBA, which is, might be the only thing we've done right in the CBA, 
like that is like they can't do that. They they would have to pay us still. Like we're they're still contractually obligated to pay us the 2020 season, which interesting. That would be I, I don't know chaos because because like Will's saying, if it's true, like some teams are cash poor and they're leaning on that that thing to happen. Like who's a guy like Portnoy to like go get pennies in the door, go buy a team, you know? Yeah. Something crazy. That something is crazy fucking like that. true, dude. <laughs> I think the stock market it. has to do better than uh, these next few days for that dude, to happen. Okay, so I was really yeah, that is like, hilarious. <laughs> I, I saw the videos of the racetrack. I, I've I've become like an avid barstool guy since we've we've joined, and I've been watching a lot of uh, the pizza reviews and the box reviews, and I just feel like Dave might be mentally unstable right now, and we need to call somebody to go to his house. I'm I'm worried about the guy. Yeah, so, he, he, we he just, just I literally just taped the rundown before I came on here and I was telling him I was like I think the unboxing will kill you like it's going to kill you um, and he was saying like he couldn't sleep last night because he had so many baby cuts on his hand and I was like this is exactly like a running back getting like 35 carries in a game and then Monday morning like they can't walk down <laughs> <Yeah>. the stairs. <laughs> Dude, I feel bad. I feel bad for the guy man and then he signs this big deal with what uh this what gambling company yeah and gambling's not doing it too hot right now dude and i'm I, not i'm, I'm yeah. not coming at dave i'm not saying he's like it's just like kind of just like what's out there right no no, no it's, we'll, it's we'll my it's me too I, it's, I boss i boss yeah. him with the pin stock yeah i was Is ready to really? ride i was ready to ride the way oh dude our our boy our dude who like owns the company we're working with he's saying this like we got to back him somehow we'll, so the boy i'm just gonna shovel some money into the pen <laughs> Just to see it crash. We'll be back. We'll be back. I mean, I have my futures in pen, so we'll be back. It's, you know. We'll oh, no question. Back. It's going to come right back up, dude. Dude, we're, once sports come back, it's like all good news from there. Then we'll be back. All good news from there. Things are going to skyrocket as soon as sports come back. Give me one sport. I don't care. Just have one ball moving on my screen, and it's like, boom. Next thing you know, we're back. Pause. <laughs> one, you just need one ball moving on that guy's screen. That's all you need. Yes. yes. No, no pause. Lance dude. Armstrong. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Dude, all, t- talk. Unbelievable work. What, Unbelievable what, what, work. I'm going to change the subject because we were talking about the cookie thing earlier and it made me think of all of your weight loss. What moment happened when you're just like, yo, I'm just going to lose a shit ton of weight? Cause you look, you look weight. When I saw you in the jumpsuit and live in action, I was like, yo, big cat is not necessarily big cat anymore. Well, no, he's medium, medium cat. I'm back yeah. up though. I'm Oprah. So I yo yo. I go back. Jonah jo- jo- Hill? You pull yeah, dude. Hill? I'm like, there's like a 30. It's pr- pretty much. My, I mean, my bar stool like career, it's anywhere from like 205 to like 250, 255. So it's a long, like, but it's usually I'm, I'm somewhere in like a 20, 30 pound, uh, like yo yo. Right now, actually, today I'm, I started my diet on Monday. So I gained 15 pounds in the first three weeks of quarantine. That's hard strong. to do. That's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. You gotta try. So you gotta try. So I'm, I'm now trying to get that back off, go the other way. I know it's like, it's the unhealthiest thing you can do. I think that's like the number one thing to like, don't yo yo your weight. And it's, that's all. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. And they say like, if you want to gain weight healthy, it's one pound a week. If you want to lose weight healthy, it's one, one pound a week. It's like, that's like, you should stair climb it down, stair climb it down. Yeah. So like I'm, the, I, I'm 15 pounds in three weeks. And then uh, in two days of dieting, I'm down like five pounds. So I'm the do opposite you, of that. Do you listen to anything or any other podcast like that? What, what wait, say? say that again. You broke up for a sec. Sorry. Do you listen to like a Joe Rogan or anything like that? I don't listen to Joe Rogan. No. Um, the length always. I just don't have enough time. Yeah, in the that's day. tough. I'll listen to Joe Rogan if there's a guest that I really want to listen to. Um, like I listened to the the last one I probably listened to was uh, the Queens of Stone Age uh, lead guitarist. That was like three months ago. But I listened to. I listen to Rosillo uh, because he's a friend. I listen to Flex. I don't even know what else I listen to, to be honest. Like I, ju- I jump around a lot. Like it's really yeah. just seasonal too. Like I will listen to. I'll try to find like whatever sports going on just to kind of like supplement whatever my knowledge is in what we're talking about. Being like, all right, like this is I'm listening to this guy about college basketball or NBA or anything like that. So it's really right. jumping around. So like the reason why I brought up Joe Rogan is he does a lot of. He's obviously a big health freak, a big exercise freak, and he does a bunch of stuff like TRT, testosterone therapy stuff. Why don't you just dabble in that? Why don't you get Buff Cat? Dude, I want to, but I feel like that's a, there's a fucks super you healthy up, way right? to do it. No, 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 no. No, so not, like, not testosterone. Like, as football, as football players, we obviously can't do it. But there's well, like um. He- <laughs> 
<laughs> listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. I failed. Well, if you do, you get caught. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll, fight my, I'll fight my own battles. I'll fight my own battles. Okay? <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's fine. There's this thing called Austrian. That's what I failed for. It was a trace amount, not even enough to do anything. For people and who are listening people, right now, Taylor just pulled out a card out of his wallet. It looks like it's from his lawyer, and he's reading it word for word. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing is called Austrian. There's a trace amount, dude. And it's for people with osteoporosis. The thing that I got popped for wouldn't even be a benefit in football. That being said, I've done a whole bunch of things about it. I took a lie detector test. I, uh, there's nothing else I can do. That, that I don't want to go back in time here, but that that timing of our beef and then you getting popped like oh, right after. Bro. Oh, bro. <laughs> that know, was gold. Hey, and I, I, can't, I can't even – dude, I have to – like literally when I put it out there, when I press send on that video, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not even joking, you came into my mind. I'm like, fuck. Well, there it goes. And you know what else I also thought when we were going through our beef is if it got really bad – I looked at Will and I was like, man, if I have one bad game, like if I had give up a sack, like who's to say Barstool doesn't just like go and put that on every single social media account? Yeah, that that's ad. right. Like, that's, you did say you that. You could easily, that. easily just kill me for everything. So we motivated that, you to play well. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. I there appreciate it is. that. There it so is. anyway, you so can testosterone. Go. I do want to do it. How uh, can okay. I do it? Yeah. There's a doctor in New York. Actually, he's a nutritionist that I use now. His name's Oz mm-hmm. Garcia, and he can get you on. It's a healthy way to give you more testosterone that would like is beneficial for your muscles, for your joints, for your ligaments. And it doesn't make you like fucking super yoked up, but it like helps your metabolism, helps you have leaner muscle, like helps burn fat better. And there's not like a ebbs and flows. You have titties one week, you have, you know, muscles yeah. the next. It's like, it's literally like a healthy, steady diet of like keeping your testosterone at a decent level. Cause after the age of 27 years old, your testosterone starts doing this. Yeah, that's why. That's oh, why dude, I'm low T. I've problems. been low T for a well, while. Well, I'm, I'm, I gotta be low T too. Usually, people that work out a lot, like or us. bigger dudes, yeah. like us, you know, and Will, Will's here too. The guys that work out and stuff like that, they have like a lo- lower testosterone because they use it all when they work out. So yeah, if you were to do, I, mean, I, bet, I bet you if you did the, all the offensive linemen in the NFL, I bet you 85% of them would be low, low testosterone. That makes sense. I've just used up all my testosterone just being that's a it. fucking alpha. <laughs> you you have a, you said you have a boy, right? Yes. Strong testosterone. Mm-hmm. But you're Strong a girl dad. You get to use the hashtag girl dad. I'm so jealous. I know. That's so cool, dude. That's so cool. <laughs> God. I'll tell you what, dude. Having a girl is is pretty epic. I'm not going to lie. Because she's sweet. She's nice. I we've, we've gone through a phase in the last three, four days where I think my daughter hates me. And so that's not like a fun thing at all because like she literally does, she wants nothing to do with me. And I've done nothing wrong. I don't understand it. And I'm at, literally at the mercy of... I feel like I'm in high school getting picked on right now by my child. So my days usually consist of me trying to win back my kid by feeding her cookies when her mom's not looking and stuff like that. But nice. anyway, Oz Garcia, go check him out because I feel like if you want to get, you can become buff cat, dude. Forget big yes. cat. Yes. I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it'd be, it. It'd I, be need, epic. I need to get like, it's just the energy thing. I always say it like people are like, oh, dude, like you're trying to get in shape to look good. It's like, no, I don't give a fuck how I look. I just want to not like wake yeah. up and be tired all the time. You drag an ass dude. in the afternoon. Yeah. That's what Will and I talk about that all the time. How can we optimize our energy all the time? Like, how do you, like, how do you stay up? Like, how do dudes like David Goggins and Joe Rogan, those types of dudes, like, always are going and going and going? It's like, I tried to do it for three, four days and I crashed. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Absolutely. Taylor, you got a second one coming on the way. Tell him, tell him, the, tell him the name. Uh, Taylor has a second uh, child, a girl. You got a name coming? Yeah. Yeah, Willow. Ooh. Wi- Willow A. Lawan is going to be her name. So I'm a girl. I was surprised too. I was, I was surprised and I was honored. That's an honor, Will. Yeah. yeah Don't I was, I was even. They, I sent, they sent me down. They called me. They're like, hey, will you come over to the house? Uh, we want to tell you something. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I get my truck like I always do. Don't ask any questions. They need my my people need a favor. No questions asked. I'm on it. I drive on over there. They sent me down. They're like, hey, mm-hmm. we've been thinking a lot. We went back and forth on a lot of names. We were hoping for a boy because we we're gonna name him after you, but we're having a girl and we would still like to name her after you. And we're just gonna it's gonna be Willow. And yeah. there was tears. Taylor started crying for some reason. We mm-hmm. hugged and yeah. it, it I, I'm I am I'm honored. I can't wait for it to happen. Huge. I'm gonna have a big announcement. Yeah. I, it's, we actually, my wife and I, since that conversation with Will, that was actually 100% factual. Everything he just said, the, nothing was off base at all. 
we've actually started we've thought about changing the name now so we're actually looking at a new baby names but as of Danielle. right now it's a one. danielle solid <laughs> uh-huh danielle. okay we could do that <laughs> yeah da- danielle's too too basic i think i know a couple danielles and uh <laughs> nah. I have a couple nah, memories with couple. some Danielle. I, I, I know some Danielle's from back in the day. Nah, nah, I'm good on Danielle's. Oh, you shit. Know what I'm shit. What are we, all right. Well, we got anything yeah. else, boys? What are we thinking? Hey, what do um, you think about the. Like hey, I've got some notes. I got some notes right there. The new unis. What, yeah, let me see. About the new let me unis? see some notes oh, real quick. Yeah. I got five more minutes because like, I told Trista that I would do something with her. Uh, but yeah, let me see. Let me see the notes. Let's, let's, go, let's go speed round through the notes. New unis. Uh, well, what do you think? Buccaneers. Uh, Bucks, new unis, whatever. Who cares? It's the Bucks. Really? I, yeah, I get what you mean Bucks. on that point, but I got to stay. I, my boy, Levante David, I can't hate the Bucks. But I like the, I like the Bucks, how, how they're going back to their normal early 2000s look. I, yes. Yeah, I had no real problem with it. It's just like, I don't know. I, when you do a uni drop, I feel like it's just always going to be not like it, it's never going to be the hype that you're putting behind it. And people are always going to roast it. So when I saw the Bucks uniform, I let me say this, the positive for the Bucks uniform is I really had no issue with it. There you go. It's that's actually like the last season of Game get. of Thrones. Yeah. That's yeah. as good as you can get because no one will ever be like, Oh my God, those uniforms are incredible. Those new ones. Right. They're just yeah, going to be like, yeah, I feel yeah like that's okay. Yeah. Atlanta Falcons. So the throwbacks that they have are one of my favorite uniforms out there the black tops white bottoms everything else they put out there's trash yeah the whole atl on the front i just it doesn't look good dude no it's it feels it's got that you know how everybody uses the xfl or arena football league jersey it, it that's what it reminds me of have you seen taylor yeah yeah i'm, I'm not a fan i like i like their old school stuff I, yeah i'm a firm i'm a firm believer the more old school you go with uniforms, the cooler they actually look. They, it, it, I don't know why teams just don't do throwbacks. Like, like if you guys wore Houston Oilers gear, like those, oh, those, those light fire, blues dude. would be so fire. The Falcons' yeah. old uniforms are awesome. I don't know why teams deviate from – like, just because it's old doesn't mean it's bad. It's usually good. I'm no, not a fan so of I, I, actually, I actually talked to Amy Adams Chuck about that situation, and she said she, want, she wants to do the Oilers throwbacks. But it's the helmet issue because you can't change the color of the helmet. The shell. But they're right? talking about changing the shell. Yeah, they're doing that yeah. now. They're changing that. Yeah. So she, I, I think if they change the shell, I think we go oil or throwback, which I think there's a lot of haters out there that would say the Houston Texans should be able to wear it because it's Houston. I fully disagree. They yeah. moved it. The franchise moved. The, the, the Tennessee Titans should be able to use the oiler uniforms. Agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. And Last it, thing, draft, draft on Zoom. Having oh, it's done. On Zoom. Packed. It's packed. How, how is this going to work? I know, dude. I, I, I have no idea. I was listening to Chris Long's podcast. Sorry, shout out Chris Long. Um, yeah. But the idea of it having on Zoom, and he's like, yo, anybody can hack this stuff. Like, yes. How are, how are you going to have any conversation with all in your war room that you have set up without somebody going to hack something? Also, like, one, coaches are going to be so confused. Like, Vrabel's the best, but there's no way that he will like. They'll someone will put it in front of him, and he'll he's a smart guy. But like, imagine that like you have internet issues or it like chops in and out. He's gonna lose it. No. Oh, dude, he's gonna punch he'll, whoever's he'll right like, next uh, to him. He'll be like, "What's the two guys from uh, Zoolander throw literally like apes on the computer, yes. and then he'll throw they'll throw it on the ground." <laughs> yes. Like, yes. He, exactly. he won't be able to handle that at all. Yes, I think uh, I, I think what they need to do is literally just do NFL NFL Network needs to put Rich Eisen by himself in front of a camera, and then people just Ooh, hand, him a, hand him a note. Love Rich Eisen, hand him a note, and he says who they pick, and then it goes to you know Todd McShay and all these other guys, and they're in their own areas and they talk about it. That's but like if you're sitting there with a Zoom and it's like. You know, some guys like this trying to talk and do it. He's like, yeah, so we, we picked uh, – he's a good player, and it's, just, it's not going to work that way. It just won't work that way. So I, I, I think you need to keep it as basic as possible. Andy Reid, him trying to do that, he's probably still celebrating his damn Super Bowl. There's yeah. no way he's going to be sober enough to handle – like, No, he doesn't like drink. He doesn't drink? He's a Mormon. I don't know what that means. He just eats, dude. I think, yeah, he yeah, just I eats. <laughs> Hey, hey, I knew a couple of Daniels that were Mormon back in the day. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah, he just eats. God that's hilarious. You. Yeah. God, that, that's impressive. That is, yeah. you, know, I, you know, all the power to him, too. And then, you know what? If anything happens from today's podcast, I got educated. Yes, there you go. 
perfect. That's beautiful. It's been fun. I've had a, I've had a, had a uh, I, I don't care what everyone says about you guys. You're a lot funnier yeah. than I thought you'd be. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, <laughs> yep. Well, there's nothing hey, hey, to hey. say to that. Are there's you guys backlogging? Situation. Hey, are you guys backlogging right now? Well, so what we're doing is like every uh, week we go into the studio one night. So like last night we went in and we recorded four interviews. So it's kind of like that. So like we're, we're, we're doing everything on Zoom, but then one night a week we go in and we try to get like, we just did interview, 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 right back, back and forth. So it sucks oh, though because you can't you. obviously interview anyone in person right now. Yeah, PFT made the comments that you guys don't talk unless you're, like, in front of a mic or really camera. Not don't talk, like, your friendship sucks. But he's saying, like, we don't really do anything unless we can get some content out of it. Right, at this point, no, that's just basic, like, that's, yeah, like, during the, if, if times were normal, we'd be talking all the time. But because times aren't normal, like, mm -hmm. we basically are, gotcha, like, gotcha. let's save, we don't have a lot of content. So let's save, usually we'd be texting ideas or texting jokes. It's like, let's save all of our discussion for the podcast because there's no sports to talk about yeah and taylor and i don't do that see that all. yeah I'm unoriginal people today. yeah well will and i just kind of go off the cuff 24 7 that's what makes it so funny and we're original but that i think you guys <laughs> are doing is really good too um, yeah we we'll love you guys big fans um shout out to p uh what is it part of my take second best podcast and all of our school really proud of you guys what you guys have done um, <laughs> thank you make make sure to subscribe rate five stars on bustle with the boys do what you want on part of my take thank you guys so much for tuning in